I just want to quickly talk about quaternions because it's something that I used to struggle with a lot. I understood that they're there to stop gimbal locking and they're there to make sure your rotations work between 360 degrees and zero. It made sense to me, but the problem is how to actually operate them didn't make sense to me. Now, I'm not going to talk about the complex part of quaternions and how to understand the IJKs and all of that. But what I will talk about is how to visualize rotations so that they don't confuse you anymore. So to start, I'm gonna talk about vectors. Vectors, people think of them sometimes as positions, but a vector only has a direction. Think of a position in Unity, for instance, as something that's like X, Y, and Z, right? The vector itself is just the line from the origin to that point. A vector itself never has a position, it just has a direction and it says, okay, I'm here, to get to here, I have to go through this motion. And then you can get back again to the start by doing the opposite. So if my vector is three, two, one in X, Y, and Z, right? Then to get back to zero, I do minus three, minus two, minus one. And that first vector shows me how to get to the position three, two, and then one, and this other one shows me how to get back the three, back the two, and back the one. But I can also, in its own right, this is a vector of its own, and that shows how to go minus three, minus two, minus one, and if you add it to this vector, the inverse, as we can say, of that vector is this vector, we go back three, two, one again. Right? And they, those will get us back to neutral. So an inverse is the position that gets you back to your origin. Now in quaternions, instead of the origin zero, 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 what you instead have is the identity quaternion. So the vector zero, zero, zero shows you how to get from zero to zero. It shows you how to get from the origin back to the origin. Whereas in quaternions, the identity shows you how to get from the origin to the origin. If you multiply a quaternion identity by itself, you end up at the origin again. But instead of thinking about quaternions like positions, instead think of them like a Rubik's cube, right? We'll just look at the middle layer. Your game object, it only rotates this way, this way, and this way. It doesn't rotate in like one, two, three, like a Rubik's cube. So we'll just look at the middle. Now I can say that this is currently at the identity. And then if I were to rotate it this direction once, right, I can get to this state. This is like my vector, right? This is the quaternion that shows how to get from origin to this point. But much like I can translate in X, then Y, then Z, and make one vector together, I can rotate in X, then Y, then Z. And this new thing is a quaternion that shows 190 degree rotation X then a y, then a z, which would actually multiply out as z times y times x, because you multiply your latest rotation on the left side. Now, if we want to get back from this position to the origin again, to the identity, we take the inverse of this quaternion. The thing with vectors is, vectors are commutative, which means I can go in x and then y, or I can go in y, then x, and the arrow that I make, the hypotenuse of this triangle, will be the exact same vector either way round. Whereas that's not true for rotations. If I rotate in X and then Y, I'll get a completely different result. So if I rotate in Y then X. So this is the Y and we'll call this one the Z. If I rotate Y then Z, you see we get this green on the left, orange here, then we rotate back. Now this time I'll rotate in Z then Y you see now this green has the red dot in it. So we've got a different result from rotating in different ways. So you have to get your rotations in the right order. But the other thing is, if this is the rotation to turn something 90 degrees anti-clockwise in Y, then the inverse of this quaternion is 90 degrees clockwise in Y. So this, right? The inverse of this, is this. But you can also just express the inverse on its own like this. This is the inverse. Because if you multiply this Rubik's Cube by this Rubik's Cube, you get this Rubik's Cube, which is the identity. And if you inverse the identity, you get itself because this is already at its base state, right? And you can do this with multiple steps. So if we go this, then this, the inverse of this quaternion is this, then this, right? Which is this. You see, so this thing is an inverse itself, and then there's this, 
that's the inverse of the inverse, which brings us back. So we just redid the original quaternion on this quaternion. And that's just how to think of quaternions. The other thing to think of when you're thinking of rotations is if you think about X, Y, and Z, some people can't visualize which way an X rotation is. An X rotation means you stick a spear through the X axis and you rotate around it like a shish kebab. So for instance, if we're saying this way out of blue is the X direction, then that means the X rotation is this way, right? But Z, we're saying that Z comes out of the white, okay? Outwards from white is the Z direction. Well then, this way is Z rotation and likewise, y is speared through the middle right y is up and down well then this is the y rotation and the other thing is you can use a quaternion on a vector so if i have some series of points like uh we'll draw a little square here and then i have a quaternion that rotates everything left 45 degrees anti-clockwise in the z direction now unity is a left-handed coordinate system which means that Z is anti-clockwise, right? Because Z is forwards. If I have a quaternion that rotates my frame 45 degrees anti-clockwise in Z, then that means this whole thing is going to become like this. Or if I want to, for instance, adjust some things on my transform locally, it may be a lot easier to first multiply by the inverse of that thing's rotation, do all the little maths on it, and then multiply it back by the original quaternion again. So for instance, if we look at this, if I have an object here and I want to move this square right relative to it, but my object is actually rotated in this plane, so I have the square here and I want it to go that way, then what I can first do is I have my quaternion that shows how to get there. If I multiply everything by the inverse of that quaternion, it's going to take all of this stuff and rotate it back to the origin. So now my square is like that. Then I can just move it through the x-axis like normal, right up to here. And then once we've done that, we then multiply it through again by its original quaternion rather than the inverse. So it goes back to here and rotates to here. So that's how you can do math something sometimes. So for instance, look at it this way. Let's say we already have an object that's rotated, right? We call that thing A. And A itself has some transformed up position, which shows its direction from the origin of the unity scene, which is that vector. But now we're just going to ignore that and draw around this object. We're looking at its local space. So then if we look at another object, this cube that's over here, and we call this object B, then we can find where B is relative to A by doing B.pos, so, you know, pos of B minus pos of A, right? That gives us this vector here, which is the distance between the two. Now, if I want to move that object to the right a bit, then what I can now do is this vector here, b minus a, I can multiply this by the inverse, so the quaternion dot inverse of my current rotation, so transform dot rotation, multiply that by this vector, that will give me this thing here, square b, and it will give me this vector here, which shows it in normal space, non-rotated space, relative to A, right? A is local frame, basically. Then I can add a new vector to this. So say plus new vector three, two, zero, zero. That will shift this B over to here, right? So let's give it a new color. Now we want to put our changes into the real world. So we want the square to end up here. So what we finally do is we take this entire thing, wrap this entire thing in brackets and say my transform dot rotation times all of that whole thing that will give me the vector, the fact this new vector. So if I make this orange vector here, which is to the new position, the value of this orange vector equals this entire thing. So it's position B minus position A, which is this blue vector here. Then we multiply that by the quaternion dot inverse, which rotates it into this frame here. We add this vector over here, which is this little black line here. 
And then finally, we rotate by this thing, and that rotates it back into this frame, giving us this orange vector here, which is V. But yeah, the, the trick is, just think of it in terms of Rubik's Cube rotation, and then everything gets a lot easier. That's my little tidbit for the day. Also, incidentally, that's why you can't have a quaternion out of one vector. You have to have a quaternion look rotation, which shows first your up vector, and the way you're looking at something. Because I can look at you, in that direction but i can also look at you in that direction from all these different rotations so that engine has to know where my up is when i'm looking at you and that will give us a working quaternion and now we're over 10 minutes hooray goodbye <laughs>